Welcome to this video on Docker Swarm. When it comes to managing and scaling containerized applications, orchestration tools are used so we don't have to do this manually. The most common examples of container orchestrators are Docker Swarm and Kubernetes. In this video, I'll focus on Docker Swarm. Before I can create a swarm, I'll need some servers to install Docker on. For this demo, I've created three VMs using the DigitalOcean provider. I have no affiliation with DigitalOcean, but have found it to be an easy platform to quickly spin up servers for prototyping and for web hosting for that matter. So here I have three servers, or droplets as they're referred to in DigitalOcean. I have Node 1, Node 2, and Node 3, which I'll install Docker on. I've already created an SSH key and added it to my DigitalOcean account. So now I can SSH into the servers using their IP addresses. Here I'll connect to node 2 and then install Docker. First I'll install Nano. Then I'll create a new shell script named docker install and paste the following commands in it. These commands will set the bash interpreter and add the docker community edition repo to the server. Then I'll yum install docker community edition and use systemctl to start docker and enable docker. Now I'll save the file and execute the following commands. I'll chmod plus x the file to set the permissions and then execute the shell script. And when a shell script finishes, I'll use systemctl to check the status to see if Docker is running. And these steps should be completed on all three servers, since Docker is required to be running on the servers. Now I've opened three terminals and SSH'd into each of the nodes. And now I can initialize the Docker swarm. Now in a swarm, there are two types of nodes, which run instances of the Docker engine which will participate in the swarm cluster. The two types of nodes are manager nodes and worker nodes. So here I'll jump into the terminal of the node one server and get the IP address of the server off the ETH0 interface. And now I can execute the command to initialize the swarm and set the advertise address to the IP of the node one server. We now have a swarm manager configured on the node one server. So it's time to register the worker nodes. I'll copy this command to join a swarm and execute it on the node two server. Then I'll jump back over to node one and execute a docker node ls and we see two nodes attached to the swarm. Node one is the leader or the manager node and node two is a worker since it doesn't have an entry under manager status. Now. I'll copy the swarm join command again and execute it on the node 3 server. Then I'll jump back over to node 1, run a docker node ls, and now we see our three nodes in the swarm. Now, in order to orchestrate the containers, I need to define a service, which defines the tasks to execute on the worker nodes. And a task in a service is associated with a container on a worker node. So the containers are run as specific tasks on a worker node. So first I'll execute this command docker service ls and we see we don't yet have a service. So now I'll execute docker service create and give the service a name of web server and define one replica using the nginx image. Now if I do a docker service ls, we'll see our web service service listed. And if I execute a docker service ps on our web server, we'll see the task running on node 1. And docker ps will show us the container. If I stop the container, and do a docker service ps on our service again, we'll see the initial task was shut down and a new task was started since we indicated we wanted one replica. 
and a Docker PS will show us the container. If I stop the container, then do a Docker PS, we'll see it's been replaced since we want one replica, as we've seen before. And a Docker service LS will show us the web server service with one of one replicas. And Docker service PS on our service will show us both the shutdown and one running containers. Now, I've gone ahead and deleted our web server service. We still have our three nodes, so I'll go ahead and create our service again with one replica. And a Docker service LS will show us the service with one of one replicas. And Docker service PS on our web server service shows us the task running on node one. If I stop the container, and do a PS on the service, we see the task has been replaced as we'd expect. Now, I'm going to execute docker service remove web server to once again delete the service. And a docker service ls will confirm it's gone, and we see we have no running containers on node one. Now, I'm going to recreate the service again, this time with two replicas, so we can look at scaling our swarm. After executing the docker service create command, we see we have two running tasks. One on node 2 and one on node 3. If I jump over to node 2 and do a docker ps, we see the one task. And the same for node 3. If I stop the container on node 3, then jump back over to node one and do a docker service PS on our web server service, we see that the task on node three was shut down and a new task has replaced it on node one. So let's move into the scaling part of this example now. I'll recreate the service with one replica this time and we see the task is running on node one. Now I'll execute docker service scale and provide the service name setting the replicas to three. This will add two new tasks to the existing one that is running. And Docker service PS on our service shows us we have one task on each node. If I jump over to node two and execute systemctl stop docker, then jump back over to node one and do a Docker service PS on our service again. In a few seconds, We'll see that the task on node 2 was shut down and a new task was added to node 1 to maintain the three replicas. Similarly, we can scale the replicas to 1, which will remove two of the three running tasks. Then, finally, remove the service when we're done. So, that concludes this video on Docker Swarm. I hope you found it useful.